It has been said in the prophecies that the time of these things would not be until the lightning that lighteth one particle that was bound under heaven shineth forth and lighteth another part under heaven, and that when this took place the coming was near at hand. Those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them read the word of God illuminated by the lightning that was once bound in one particle of matter. Let them know that the time is here. Waste no time in indecision, but set out at once upon the path you are to take. Identify with my life, accept the gifts that I bring, or take your stance in the dying world. There are many in the camp of Satan this very day who will repent and share in my eternal life. But those who are lukewarm, believing neither this nor that, will be too much associated with the materializing patterns to break free when these tendencies are removed from human levels of consciousness. Many who sup with Satan this very hour will be the means through which I change the world, but many who now loudly proclaim the praise of the Lord will be the very ones to deny my energies of love and life and the very ones to cling most desperately to their fears and convictions. Yet it does not have to be this way. The energies that are unfolding your planet are energies of life. There is nothing that needs to stand between them and their free expression through you. There is nothing that needs to stand between you and yourself, between creator and created, save time. And if you will come now and take my hand, together we will banish it and become as one. The stewards that I left in ancient times to guide and look after your race, you disregarded and killed. So I came to you myself through Jesus of Nazareth. You crucified me then, for my collective coming was not understood, and the forces of materialization were yet strong. This time I come to you in might and glory. You shall not disregard me again, for it is written that the stone the builders rejected turned out to be the most important stone of all. The builders, the earthly patterns, who were molding matter to conform to my unconscious dreams, had so little idea of my true nature that they saw as worthless the most important state of consciousness that had ever rested upon a member of your species. Yet this state of consciousness is to be the only state of consciousness that is to survive into the next age. Do not reject it because of its apparent lack of survival value. Receive it and learn a new definition of survival. It will dance in your circuitry and spark your physical body into eternal life. This state of consciousness is the consciousness of the being of life himself. It is the current your circuitry was designed to operate on. At this time in your history, you are like an electrical system that has just come off of the assembly line, but has yet to be plugged in. It will not be much longer, however. In truth, this generation will not pass away until it has come to pass. The momentum of my coming is as irreversible as the rising and setting of the sun. The Son of God is destined to go as I have determined, and trouble will ensue for all who try to obstruct the unfoldment. These plans were not made yesterday. These things have been decided of old, even before I quickened the first life upon this planet. It would be well if you accepted the changes of my coming. Enter gracefully into the patterns that I have prepared for you. Don the garments of my design. They are bodies of light. Your present physical bodies are like unto them as a light without current is like unto one that is lit. Do not continue to define yourselves, but allow me to define you in my service. What you will experience will so far surpass your expectations that life in these shadow years will soon be forgotten and left behind as in a dream that has little meaning. This life is our own life. These plans are our own plans. On this channel I speak to you in the second person because of many, for many at this time, this is the most effective means of receiving this information. But do not be deceived by the dichotomy implied in, these, in this mode. I am your life. You are my expression. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the consciousness, you are my focus. There is no separation except in time, perhaps, and in my presence, time does not exist. I have the clarity now, while you sleep, yet in darkness. But I am calling you, earnestly, to awaken. I would share with you the totality of my perceptions. And that is the end of chapter 10. Chapter 11, Education of Spirit. In times when fear patterns predominate, the laws that humans require are many and complex. But when those patterns are broken up, as is shortly to be, all human laws shall be abolished. In the presence of my spirit, there is but one law, and that is the law of love. Love all, love what is, love yourself as you are, and love me as I express through you. No matter how diverse expressions appear to be, realize that they are all different differentiations of your own essence in various contexts. Love them all. See the unity of life. The law of love is more than a law. It is the way of life. What do you think causes the sprouts in the spring? What do you think brings forth to the branch, brings fruit to the branch? It is all love, all life, calling out the potential of this planet. Be in and of this love, and the many confusing laws of old will be absorbed in the glorious expression of life on earth. It is written that the day will come when men will no longer live on the bread of matter, but on the living word of God, a tune that day is now. The nourishing information awaits within. Eat of it in ways that you will not understand with the rational mind. Partake of infinite energy. Do not reason over it and trouble your hearts and say it is by this mechanism or that mechanism. But arise, take up my identity in your being and enter the house that I have prepared for you in my manifest body. Follow the direction of informing life. It rises up within you like the feeling you got when you were in love and your beloved drew near. It quickens your heart this very moment. Trust in it. It will not lead you astray. Be impeccable in all that you do, however small a thing, and in that perfection express my fullness. On the hills of Galilee, I taught you to cast out devils in my name. But this is a new age and a new generation. And to those of you who are to work with me in the preparation of this planet, I will say this as well. Cast out definitions in my name. For it is by definitions of a multitudinous kind that the spirit of life, bubbling so gently out of the earth, is held in the restraining halls of Satan. In the coming age, it is to be, by my definitions alone, that matter is informed. On vibrational channels of being, I am broadcasting these definitions even now. If you silence your thoughts and attune to your inner signals, you will begin to expand into my conceptions into a new interpretation of reality. Find the doorway to this reality through your heart. Enter and be still. Find out what manner of being you are. I have been beaming my signals to you steadily ever since you first left the garden, but their message has been faint among the loud clamorings of your many words. Now with my approach, these signals are increasing in amplitude. Soon it will be they who, are, who drown out the many words. Turn into these signals and learn about yourselves. There is much that you have forgotten. If an acorn falls to the ground among many other acorns and becomes so involved with its relationship to the other acorns that it clings ever to its definition of itself as an acorn, then that acorn will never die as an acorn and will never discover that it's, it is in God's definition. It is not an acorn, but a mighty oak. Do not be like the acorn in this parable and cling to your larva self-images until you are rotting and crawling with worms. Release your childish conceptions and allow the Creator to define you in His terms.